Networking is very personal. It's a means establishing, building, and growing your network. The process of networking means doing the work of connecting with people. I'm your host, Anna Malikian. And before we start with today's show, please remember to visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com, it's .zone. There you can find all the episodes and other amazing resources, all at mindset.zone. Expanding possibilities, the Mindset Zone. Joe Epfelbaum is the author of five books and the CEO of Ajax Union, a B2B marketing agency based in Brooklyn, New York. Joe is a business strategist, marketing expert, and certified Google trainer. He's a divorced dad of five, rollerblader, runner, stand-up comedian, and amateur rapper. His latest book is titled High Energy Networking. Get anything you want in life while building meaningful relationships that last a lifetime. Welcome to the Mindset Zone, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I was reading your book, and I think there is a lot there that is so helpful for so many people. And I want to set our conversation within this framework of the mindset definition by Carol Dweck, where she speaks about fix and grow mindsets, that we have these beliefs, conscience and unconscious, that condition in many ways the way that we see the world out there. And then in some parts of our lives, we have this fixed mindset, so we have a belief system that we have specific basic qualities and uh, traits like they are fixed, very difficult to change. And uh, we can have uh, grow mindsets around other things that is a more open view and belief that we can do something about. We can learn how to become better around that areas of our lives. And my theory is that, and by reading parts of your book, you had a fixed mindset around network and networking until you decide to know there is something I can do about it. So can you tell us a little bit about your own journey with the networking? Yeah, when I started networking, I first of all, didn't even know networking was a thing. Like, you know what you know, and you know what you don't know, but there are things that you don't even know that you don't know about, right? So that's most of the knowledge in the world. We don't even know that we don't know. So we don't even have access to that information. But going into anything with a fixed mindset for me meant going into it without thinking that I even had a possibility of being successful at it. Like, it's not something I'm born with, right? It's just I, I don't have that that skill. I don't have that talent. I, I don't know how to do it. Something that I would want to avoid, something that I could easily give up or something I wouldn't even try or get defensive or get personal when anyone mentioned anything, blame others, get discouraged from not being successful at networking. Like when I walked into my first networking event, it was a chamber of commerce event in New York City. And I walked in, I bought a ticket. I was like, oh, networking, it's easy. I can do it, whatever. Meet people, who knows, right? I walk into the event and suddenly I see a hundred people in a bar and I freeze <laughs> and I freeze right away. The elevator closes behind me and then I turn around. I'm like, I got to get out of here. I, I can't, you know, the first thing I did was freeze, but then I want to run. I want to run away. So I hit the elevator button, but the elevator was really slow and it wasn't coming. So I, you know, I looked around and then the woman by the door said, Joe, I recognize you. Why don't you come in and, you know, get a drink. Here's your drink ticket. So I beeline for the bar and there was a guy with a suit <laughs> Um, and he sold life insurance. He's like, hi, my, my name is whatever. And I sell life insurance. Uh, is it your first time here? And I was like, yeah, I don't really know how to network. I don't even know what to do here. Yep. You know, I'm a little scared. So he's like, let me get you a beer. Give me your drink ticket. So he orders a beer for me and we're sitting over there and he's like, listen, if you really want to network, let me see, do you have business cards? And he pulls out his business card, <laughs> gives me business. I said, yes, I have business cards. He's like, just give everyone your business card. So I had a Google hat on. 
and I had business cards. I was, I'm a certified Google trainer. So I was doing Google seminars right. mm-hmm. and Google stopped promoting the seminars. And I decided I'm going to go to networking events to promote the seminars. Like anyone that goes to an event, they would want to come to my seminar. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I decided I'm going to walk around and I'm going to promote the Google seminar. And I, I, essentially what I did was, is I didn't even have conversations with people. I would interrupt people. <laughs> I would give them all a card and I'd be like, hey, I'm here um, representing Google and I'd love to give you an invitation to my seminar. And I thought everybody, there's a hundred people there. I thought everybody would want to come. It was a total failure. I felt like garbage. I just left. <laughs> I took the train home, sitting in the train, thinking to myself, I can't do this. This is not for me. It was so uncomfortable. I really hated it. And the only person that called me like a week later was the life insurance guy asking me if I want to buy a whole life insurance. And I said, no, I can't afford it. I don't have the money. And so I really started to realize that, you know what? There has to be a better way. So I went to Barnes and Nobles and I bought a book by Bob Burr called Endless Referrals. Yes. And I started researching networking. I started looking at videos online and I realized there's actually a skill that you can learn but you first have to change your mindset around what networking really is. So I started going to lots of networking events and seeing that a lot of people had the wrong mindset. They were just there to take, take, take. Everybody was sharing what they want. What do they need? And nobody was really there to like be a consistent giver, to really connect deeply, to go deeper than the transactional. Here, let me tell you what I do. Let me tell you what you do. And let's see if we can support each other some way. That's very transactional. Absolutely. And and that I think is why people shy away. It's almost like um, in sales, uh, some people, I work a lot with coaches and consultants and uh, that uh, when they are starting their own business, they are a little bit uh, reticent about learning sales because they equate sales to the sales uh, salesperson in the car lot, so to speak. So they have that image that believe about sales and they don't want to be one of them. And when they realize that the sales can be a totally different energy and you really are um, selling an idea and selling a tool that can be extremely uh, transformational for the other person or organization, the dynamic changes. And I think for networking, it's a little bit uh, we have to change the way we see it to feel comfortable and to be something that we enjoy doing it. And but let me go, go slow down here because I think you said so many good things uh, there that I just want to dig a little bit in some of these things. So what if you think back um, before you start networking professionally and really um, uh, be a in- incredible a practitioner of this craft of networking and uh, to the point that now you are a lot of your business is coming from networking and you know to the point that writing a book about this. What, uh, do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? I definitely consider myself an extrovert. I get my energy from other people, from being around other people. When I'm by myself, I, you know, I sometimes need to recharge by myself, but for the most part, I'm definitely an extroverted person. I always was an extroverted person, but I was more like one-on-one extroverted. Ah, Like mm -hmm. with people, I like to talk. I like for people to talk to me. I like to talk over the phone. I'm really good one-on-one, but one to many, I was really scared about doing it. I didn't know that I was scared at the time. You know, I had thoughts like, and a lot of my clients have this before working with me. They're like, why would someone successful want to help me? Yeah. Do people even want to build relationships with new people? Or networking is hard and people who network are just not successful people. Or yeah. ROI doesn't happen from networking. Or networking is a waste of time. Yeah, I love the, the that negative voices because I think it's interesting and important to bring the introvert, extrovert continue to the network conversation because at least the extroverts in the beginning, they have that, they like to be with people and they, they get energized. I'm more for the introverts side. And I even, uh, because you said I got the, uh, the play, I signed up to go to this networking event for many introverts that first sign up to go to the networking event is a big challenge. Um, But I think there is advantage of being an introvert because in general, introverts are very good listeners. So once we are in the event, when, once we meet somebody, we really can have really good conversations uh, and we will not an introvert to the introvert style you tell distribute business cards they go no 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 but have an interesting conversation yes i mean for that 
So I, I think uh, people that are listening to this conversation, I think they they have to be aware of where they are in terms of a, their energy and how they can use that to uh, to help them because there is not the right and wrong here is how can you use it in a way yeah. that is helpful. I don't think that networking has anything to do with being introverted or extroverted unless you don't understand networking. If you believe that networking is just about meeting new people all the time and like, you know, going to events with lots and lots of people, then you have networking all wrong. You don't understand networking. Networking doesn't mean that you like going to concerts and that you get your energy from other people. That's not what networking is. People make networking mean that, but that's not where networking is. Networking is very personal. It's a means establishing, building, and growing your network. The process of networking means doing the work of connecting with people. Whether you're introverted or extroverted, you like connecting with people. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you don't like connecting with people. It just means that you need more time to recharge by yourself if you're introverted. And if you're extroverted, you need to be other people with other people to recharge. That's all what net, what introvert and extrovert means. Whether you're introverted or whether you're extroverted, you if you have the right strategy to network properly, to build relationships properly with other people, then whether you're a net whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, you could give your elevator pitch. You could connect with people. You can ask the right questions. You can have courage and still go to a networking event, even if you're uncomfortable. Whether you're introverted or extroverted. Extroverted people also are scared of going to random events, especially when it's intimidating and there's other very successful people there. Extroverted people can also be afraid of public speaking. 90% of people are afraid of public speaking. They're afraid of judgment. They're afraid of rejection, all that stuff. So whether you're introverted or extroverted, a lot of times we use the word introverted as an excuse to uncover Absolutely. the fact that we're just af afraid of rejection. And everybody's afraid of rejection in some degree because that is a b basic human nature element that we know that for our survival, we depend to being part of a group. We are social also, animals. And there's also a continuum when it comes to mindset. There's like, there's, there isn't fixed in growth. There's fixed and then like low growth, yes, like mixed, Absolutely. high, low growth. There's high growth. There's different, there's different types of, uh, there's a whole continuum of like, how you're looking, like the perspective that you look through the world through. So when it comes to your worldview of networking or the challenges that you face or what you do when you encounter a challenge or the effort that you're going to make to network or the feedback that you get around networking or criticism or looking at how you view other people's successes or even when you're making mistakes, like we all make mistakes, like what do you make the mistakes means? You hide your mistakes or do you honor your mistakes? And learn you, from them. Do you make excuses? I always say you either have reasons or you have results. <laughs> you have lots of reasons why you're not taking action. Mistakes can be corrected or mistakes is learning or mistakes is the best thing that can happen because I learned so much more from my mistakes than I learned from my successes. And then asking for help. Do you turn down help? Do you just tolerate help? Do you accept help? Is help desirable or do you actually go out and look for help? Do you hire yes. coaches? Do you read books? So there's a whole continuum of fixed mindset versus not fixed mindset. So there isn't one place. And in different categories of our life, we're different. Sometimes we're really, really good at mindset when it comes to our relationships and we're terrible at mindset when it comes to our health or when it comes to our business. Yeah. I had a great mindset for business, but I had a terrible mindset for relationships and a terrible mindset for my health. So sometimes when you have a strong mindset in one area, it affects your mindset in another area. It's not automatic that you have the same mindset in every area of your life. Absolutely. So and that is one of the reasons that I like to use the plural mindsets more than mindset. And going back, I love that image that you are proposing of a continuous. Uh, it's not the black and white. Is a continuous between fixed mindset and growth mindset. And around networking, you start your story was law. And the first advice that you got from that live insurance person was seeing uh, have a fixed mindset really around network of seeing networking as a transactional thing. And what you went for learning is that maybe if I go to the other side. So tell me a little bit more about the other side. So the other side of networking is where I find someone that I know that I like, that I trust. It isn't the first encounter with this person because the first encounter has to lead to the second encounter, yes. which has to lead to the 
third encounter, which has to lead to the fourth encounter. You don't build a relationship just by meeting a person one time. You follow up, you meet him in person, you meet him on the phone, you have a conversation, you go on Zoom. This is not our first rodeo. We didn't just hop on the podcast from seeing you one time for one second at a group event. We saw each other a few times. We saw each other, on, we connected on social media. We see each other's content. We're accessing each other. And so a relationship happens over time and happens with a series of interactions. So for me, I had a series of interactions with the president of an organization. And we went out to lunch. I invited him to go out to lunch. I followed up with him many times. He's very busy. I followed up with him many times. Eventually, we decided we're going to get lunch in Brooklyn. And actually, it was breakfast in Brooklyn. And we got, it was going to be lunch, but it became breakfast. We, were, we got breakfast in Brooklyn. So we're sitting there and we're talking, connecting. I'm learning about him, his wife, his divorce, his kids, his situation, what he's doing in business, how he got into business to begin with. He learned about me. I told him everything about me. And we connected very, very deeply. He asked me a lot about Judaism and he asked me about my culture and growing up and my preferences and my hobbies and all types of stuff. And then I asked him the question, the million dollar question that I always ask everyone, what can I do to add value to your life? How can I help you in your business and your relationships with yourself? And he said, I'm looking to meet executives at hospitals in New Jersey that have more than 500 people. And I said, I have a list of all the hospitals in New Jersey. I have access to a system. I have a list. I can build you a list and email you a spreadsheet with all the names of all the hospitals that have more than 500 people, with the email addresses, with everything. And he's like, really? You can do that? I was like, 100% I can do that. So he said, okay, well, do that for me. That would be fantastic. That would be unbelievable. That would be amazing. That would be fabulous. He's like, what can I do for you? I said, I'm looking to meet VPs of sales and marketing at companies that are business to business. And he said, okay. And he left. And as soon as I got back, I did what I promised. I sat down. I built a list for him. I emailed him. He replied right away. He said, thank you so much. It's going to change my business. And then that's it. He saw me online after that. He commented on something I had online. But that's it. Two weeks later, I get a call from him. And he's like, Joe. I said, yeah, what's going on? How was the list? The list is amazing. I have something else I want to talk to you about. He said, I have a friend, very, very close friend who trusts me a lot, who works for a $400 million B2B company. They hired two agencies and they're not happy with those agencies. Would you do me a favor and have a conversation with him and make him understand what he needs to do to be successful with an agency? I said, absolutely. I would love that. So he sets me up. I get on a quick 15-minute call and it turns out they, they need what we offer. And he says, I would love a proposal. So we sent him a proposal, start off at 15,000 a month. And right away, he approved the proposal. It wasn't even him looking to do diligence <laughs> or anything like that. Now, mind you, typically, my clients were spending 1000 to $2,000 a month. That was the average client. And I've serviced 1,100 clients. So we had a lot of companies, yeah. 75 full-time employees. So I would have to pick up 50 new accounts. Wow. With this type of account, it was like 15 accounts. It was like 15 accounts in one. So it was a big deal for my company. And I was like, wow, I can close this? I mean, why would he trust me? And the guys legitimately said, if this guy vouched for you, I don't need to do any due diligence. I am ready to go. He signed the agreement. Within three months, we got them such good results. He tripled the retainer to $45,000 a month. I kid you not. We generated $2 million from that relationship. Love $2 million it. from that relationship. And why? Because I just asked somebody, what can I do to add value to your life? I built a deep relationships and I told him what I needed. And then I added so much value for him. And even if I wanted to have added value, I added value just from connecting, from being there, from reaching. I'm the one that reached out. I'm the one that followed up. I'm the one that stayed top of mind using social media. And then, and, and I knew, like in that moment, I had the proof to back up my new set of beliefs that givers gain. So what happens is we have, our mindset is made up of thoughts, of beliefs, and of habits of thinking. Absolutely. And that is basically what our, our set of thoughts, our set of beliefs, our set of habits. And beliefs don't just happen. They get formed based on the proof that we experience. So when we experience a proof that networking doesn't work, <laughs> then we have the proof, the legs for our belief to stand on. And we end up living life like networking is a waste of time. Or like, why would a successful person want to network with me? Or do building relationships with new people, or is it even a thing? Or ROI doesn't happen from networking. I'm a testament that if you network and you build relationships with people, you get a massive ROI from networking, an ROI that you can't get from cold calling. If I cold call this VP of sales, no, <laughs> ignore me. 
And even if he wanted to sign up, he would sign up at a thousand bucks a month because he doesn't trust me to start at that level, to go deep, to really tell me all his problems with all the other agencies and me seeing how we can really help him and showing him and then servicing him and proving it to him and giving them an ROI and them tripling their retainer with us. And then us getting into other departments and really making a difference for the company. If you believe that networking is a waste of time because you've wasted time networking the wrong way, that's why I created the book to share my experiences with the wrong way of doing it, just handing out business cards at a random chamber of commerce one time and never following up with anybody. And then going deep with one human being, following up many times, having a serious conversation, meeting him for breakfast in Brooklyn, adding massive value, telling him what I need, and then getting what I need. Now, it doesn't happen every single time, but if you're doing it consistently, it's going to turn into real business. I absolutely love this. It's an incredible example of uh, everything. I'll just say the, the notion that, uh, and, and even the business cards, I think even nowadays, if we are in an in-person event and we give, if I give a business card, my intention above all is to ask the business card of the other person because I, if I have the responsibility of doing the follow-up, I know that things will happen. Let me tell you something else, another story, because even during a pandemic, you can network and build relationships because most people think, oh, only if you do it in person. I got an, I, I, I did a, I had a networking event. I hold virtual networking events every single month. And I had a networking event for my students that are in my community, my evergreen networking community. And one of my students said, Joe, who do you want to meet? And I said, I want to meet sales trainers. He's like, I have a sales trainer. His name is Jeff Goldberg. Can I introduce you to him? I said, I would love it. He introduced me to Jeff Goldberg and we get on a Zoom call. We get on a 30 minute Zoom call. And right away, Jeff was funny, making jokes. I was funny. I was making jokes. We were like brothers from another <laughs> mother. We were just like so connected. And we decided we're going to set up a call with each other every two weeks. And we did that for like 10, 10, we did 10 calls, a series of 10 calls. And we really connected with each other. I taught him about LinkedIn. He taught me about sales and we were just deeply connected. We never met in person, mind you. He said, Joe, Joe who do you want to meet? I said, I want to do speaking engagement. I do workshops for teams of salespeople. That's why I want to network yeah. with you as a sales trainer. He introduced me to his biggest client and, they, and I got a $10,000 speaking gig just from that introduction. Then he went on to introduce me to a few other clients which turned into a multiple five-figure speaking gigs and multiple clients to Evergreen. I also introduced him to some of my clients that need sales training, and he got a bunch of clients closing five-figure deals as well. And all of a sudden, we have this friendship, you know, and then we finally met after we were both vaccinated. We finally met, <laughs> and we were just like, oh, my God, where have you been all my life? Yeah. But if I had the mindset of, oh, I can't network online, it doesn't work, none of this works, networking is a waste of time, I wouldn't have had this amazing relationship. And now I write stand-up comedy with them. We're just having fun getting to know each other, and we still make introductions for each other organically as it makes sense. So it's not like a forced introduction, like I have to do it. But you know, I, I want people to speak to him because he does right by them. He makes a difference for them. So... I just want to say that doing it online works just as well. And it's the same dynamic. It's a long, you are thinking long term. It's not just a transactional thing. It's thinking long term. It's thinking how you can do to keep following up, keep cultivating those relationships. How can you add value? And another important thing, you are networking and finding people that you love to networking with, that you genuinely like them. They are uh, because they are common values, common interests that makes fun networking with those people. I agree. I agree. And if you're not having fun, you're not going to end up doing it. You have to have more of, you're not just doing it for the money. People that say they're just doing it for the money, they're just in business for the money, they're missing out because when the money doesn't come, it's not going to last. You want it to last. The reason why you don't want to do things for the money is because when the money's not there, I interviewed 52 CEOs in my network asking them, do you do it for the money? Do you not do it for the money? Every single one says, I don't do it for the money. And these are CEOs that were on the Inc. 5000, fastest growing companies in the US, very successful, multi-million dollar businesses, high growth, high energy. And every single one told me they don't do it for the money. If they did it for the money, they would have quit a really long time ago before it started making money. When you do something consistently, then you get results. I'm, I'm working with a personal trainer right now. He's like, don't do it for the muscles, do it for the lifestyle, build yes. a lifestyle. So for me, 
that's really that's really a very significant a significant way a different way of viewing a different perspective a different mindset a different access to be able to see things in a way that most people don't see it and if you want to have what most people don't have you got to be willing to do the things that most people are just not willing to do yeah, I totally agree and the thing here because the only thing about networking or one of the drawbacks about networking is that it's time consuming so I think we really have to focus on people that we enjoy and be strategical. So be authentic and be strategical uh, because it's going to take a significant amount of our time, but it's going to be worthwhile. Not all the relationships are going to result in like in the success stories that you are telling, but some of them will and you really will make a huge difference. The right relationship, the right networking strategy will save you a decade. The right relationship is something that you cultivate, not something that you hope will come. Yeah. I always tell my kids, if you want to have friends, be a friend to other people. And you're not going to get all the benefits from one friend. What you're going to get instead is benefits from different people at different times in different ways. And the more you can take a step back, the more you can stop being transactional, the more you can connect. The universe sends you people to connect with. The universe sends you people <laughs> that resonate with you. The universe wants you to be happy, not to be miserable. And if you're miserable, it's a sign that you shouldn't be doing it. You should do the things that bring you joy. You should be in a state of excitement, of high vibration. That's why I call it high energy networking, not not dragging your feet through the mud networking, not boring networking. It needs to be exciting. And so some people say, oh, it's a missed opportunity just to connect with people that you like. Wrong. Those people are wrong. They think that it's important to suffer to be successful. Mm -hmm. Well, I know a lot of people who have, are billionaires and they're still not happy. They're not happy with their family. They're not happy with their parents. They're not happy with their kids. Or it took them till for them to be 75 for them to realize that they can just be happy with what they have. Yep. And so if you're listening to this and you're younger than 80, <laughs> and you're younger than 70 and you're younger than 60, you have a long time to build relationships. Most people overestimate how deep you can go with somebody in one year and they underestimate how deep you can go somebody in a decade. The relationships that I have that are 10 years old are very, very, very deep. They're sewn with so many different, I was just talking to somebody who's a level five relationships. There are five levels to a relationship. The first level is somebody just a contact. Mm -hmm. The second level, somebody who's a connection that you would maybe get drinks with, maybe uh, maybe even lunch. With a relationship, you would have lunch, right? That's the next level. Mm -hmm. The contact, you wave to. The connection, you have drinks with. The relationship, you actually have lunch with for an hour, like in a business context or whatever. And then a person who you go to dinner with, that's a friend. That's somebody who graduates from just being a relationship that you're building and strategic for your business to somebody who is actually a friend. And then the next level is a five, level five. That's a partner. That's someone we have maybe a handful of those people in our life. If we're lucky, maybe we have a dozen. But those are the people that you pick up the phone and you call when you're struggling, that you know that will show up for you, that you know will respond to you, that you know are not going to totally ghost you. I've had relationships where things are going well, and all of a sudden they ghost me and they become a contact. Yeah. It happened. I, I I, I love these five levels because it reminds me also of the work of Dunbar that you also refer uh, in the in the book. Um, because, so to say, we only have a limited capacity to uh, X number of connections. Usually we speak the 150 Dunbar number, but there is a concentric groups within that number and even concentric gr groups around that number. I think what Dunbar was relating to is like friends. I think they were related to friends and deep relationships. I think strategically, you can have 30,000 contacts. You could have several thousand people who are connections on LinkedIn where you recognize their names and you know who they are. You could do that. But in terms of building relationships with people, you can't build actively more than 150 relationships at a time because of the amount of time that you have to invest. So whereas I would spend five minutes with a contact, maybe I would spend 15 to 30 minutes with a connection. Maybe I'll spend an hour or two with a relationship and maybe with a friend I could spend half a day or go on vacation with. And with a level five, I can spend a week with or a month with just like, you know, even living with them. Like I would, 
that those are people that are deep that you're really, really, really connected with. So I really so much appreciate the richness of information that you provide in this half an hour is uh, amazing. People have the book to go deep on it. And of course, they can connect with you on LinkedIn too. Yes, they connect with you on LinkedIn. If you want to get the book, you can go to highenergynetworking.com. It'll take you straight to the Amazon page. I recommend getting the hardcover of the book because you can get the high energy networking assessment, the checklist for business networking success, the self-discovery questions. I even have 700 categories of people that are networking friendly in networking groups. <laughs> I teach you how to create mini groups of people within groups. I teach you how to host your own networking event how to be able to stay top of mind with people, the follow-up strategies, how to connect cold with people on LinkedIn, warm them up, nurture them. I actually give you the scripts on what to say to connect with people. I give you the scripts of what to say, how to nurture people and how to get into meetings and what to say during a conversation. I walk you through the best questions to ask to build trust, the follow-up strategies that you need, how to properly listen, how to be memorable, how to come up with an elevator pitch that's simply not boring, how to deal with any energy vampires, how to organize your connections, <laughs> whether you should go deep or you should go wide, all that stuff. I talk about so many great things that I experienced, you know, like things like thinking about your network besides the five levels of a relationship that I mentioned, but also thinking about your networks in terms of there's a strategic part of your network, there's a personal part of your network, and then there's an operational part of your network. So understanding the three different types of networks that you can have, how to set the right goals for networking, how to get an ROI from networking, um, all that other stuff. And, and even if you're afraid of all this, I teach you how to overcome the fears um, that allow you what to document for connections, like very, very tactical things, but also very mindset-y things. And the book's uh, just over 200 pages. And there's it's probably my most comprehensive book that I've written so far. I love it because you eliminate the excuses of, okay, I don't know what to do. Okay, here at the list of concrete tactical step of what you can do, but not forgetting the strategy behind it and the mindset behind it. So you really are working all those elements there. That is the secret of success, in my opinion. So thank you so much for being here to, with us today. Like I said before, we will have everything in the show notes and let's go and networking in a meaningful way. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for listening and remember to visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com, it's .zone. There you can find all the episodes and other amazing resources, all at mindset.zone. As always, I'm so grateful you are here. Expand what's possible for you, for the ones around you, for the world.